make this and that a little bit better. So I will fix this. Notice the way I constructed this was to a G minus 1 theoretical. So what does that mean? It means that these two surfaces come, uh, were overbuilt. You can see that because the fillet runs uh, way deeper and you have CVs, actual surface CVs that are in the fillet, if you will. So it was built to a theoretical, but they do not match. So there's a gap between this boundary and this boundary. So that's what I would call a G minus one theoretical. It's not perfect, but it does give you uh, some of the advantages of building to a theoretical without having to actually find an, a, an enclosed volume. Because the topology for the rim piece and the topology for the back are so very different. I'm not saying it can't be done, but it's, it's genuinely hard. I'm going to save. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on the top. So clearly, there isn't enough crown here. So again, I'm going to go to move CV, and I'm going to NUV some hulls. So maybe uh, shift left click on this, shift left click on that, and let's give it a little bit of a uh, bow. Let's give it a little bit more bow. So we're just going to move it up, up, up. Okay. That definitely uh, made a difference for the better. Now what I'm going to do is, well, there are multiple things I could do. Notice that this surf is degree 3 by 5. So it has a lot of CVs in one direction, uh, a little bit like my back surface, but it only has uh, a few CVs in the other direction. So I could do two things. I could up the degree to something like 5, and then work with more CVs to have finer control, like I did on the back surface. You know, I have a lot of CVs on that. Or what I could do is I could weight the CVs that I have. And in this case, I'm going to weight the CVs. So what does weighting CVs mean? Well, I'm going to slide hulls around. And you will notice when I slide this around, it will be like uh, it will have a drastic impact on the curvature more than you would think and then I'll NUV it up and that will give me fine control see how the how the crown how the curvature is now uh, accelerating more towards the left than it is more homogeneous across the whole surface that's because these CVs are moved more towards the left so the surface will influence more towards the left and uh, of course remember this was a blend surf so this will always have construction history and smoothly update. So this is definitely looking good, so let me increase that. I always want to look at my CVs because I do not want to push this hull over that hull. So I can only move it a little bit more. That's about it. Before I also am forced to move this one with it. I can move the boundary CV as well. And I may have to unless I want a lot of crown. So let's move that up. You notice my curvature combs have disappeared. That's okay. We can select the whole model and just hit this dynamic section button and then go back out of the tool. Let's see here. This is now dipping down. So you will see it will it'll be a bit of an interplay between both the back and the top. I'm just using the same commands. I'm using shift a lot to select. You can see I'm dragging this and then letting go and only when I let go does it update the combs. Uh, this is good because there's a lot of construction history. Uh, if you've been paying really good attention, you'll notice it takes about a second or three um, before it updates with every uh, time I move a hull around. I don't think I'll ever have a smooth G3 connection on here without making the surface very distorted. Just because the top really is genuinely flatter than the fillet. But I do want a fairly nice join. So we have G2 at the top 
We have G3 at the back. And again, I will need to adjust this a little bit. There. See how fast it is, though. And because I'm working with a black background, I only see CVs. I can actually put the surfaces back off. Well, that was really handy to see them, so I'm going to put them back on, but maybe at 0.3, so that they're just like faint phantom lines. And let me see. I still have a lot of crown over here, which is driven by this surface. So I'm going to try and change that as well. This time, I think I'll move single CVs. Let me see. You know, don't be too afraid to just pick a CV and move it. Because you always have undo. Wow, that changed it around a lot. I am going to undo. I am going to move it, but less. Yes, very nice. And this one as well. Oh. Other direction. Hmm. Let's move this one. Other direction. Mm, and then this one. Yeah. Yeah, that's not too bad. I still have a bit more crown here than I do over there, but... Mm, I think I'll leave it like that for now. So, let's take a look at what we've got. I don't want to be working like this forever. Graham Bullock posted a screenshot exactly like this with the setup and I just had to try it. And it does work really well. It, you know, you just, you get in a different state of mind, you tweak it, you know, maybe you spend half an hour and then you go back to the regular alias environment and you continue working on it. So it's more like a mental switch. You may also want to turn the background white if, for example, you're doing um, model analysis looking at the highlights maybe you want a white background you can play with the background colors you can play with the shaders just to uh, not fatigue the eyes you know the eyes get fatigued and they see the same thing over and over you start to you start to lose that critical judgment so I'm pretty satisfied with this so what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to go back to the user colors, and there's a very easy edit reset button at the bottom, which will reset all the colors for me. I can turn the grid back on very easily because it's on my marking menu. That's the default marking menu, by the way. That's Control shift right mouse button, and it's right here. Now, I did change these two, so I think toggle grid is um, this one, I think, by default. I'm not sure, or maybe it was the shades. Anyway. Uh, these controls on off are different by default but they're on that marking menu and you can see we're back to alias Ooh, it was scary uh, I've lost my visual curves there that's not cool so we can again but the reason that we're losing visual curves is because the freeform blend if I edit the construction history is set to Bezier surfaces if you turn this off and you let it create a NURBS patch uh, you'll have spans but it will never break because depending on how you edit the surface it throws in more or less bezier pieces you can see this is a piece this is a piece and depending on the different pieces uh, shaders can go uh, kaput <laughs> if you will but it's, it's very easy to get it back you just click on the tool and you just regenerate and you're done All right, it's that easy Oh, look at these visual curves. My goodness. I'm getting a hockey stick effect. You see the visual curve. I mean, it's connecting so smoothly that it's starting to flow back in on itself. See? That's really beautiful. That, of course, makes this somewhat harsher G2 condition a little sad because if we could get this to be G3, you really would have a very smooth hockey stick. Uh, highlight that would roll back on itself. Very nice. That's something that you could further. So see, now I would have to start making judgment calls. So first I said, well, this surface, you know, it's supposed to be flat. Um, oh, wait, that's my blend surf. Yeah, oh, you can see the blend surface CVs. Mm. 
this 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 row is down too much. So I definitely screwed something up. Yeah, I would you would have to adjust that. This is a curvature row, so I'll adjust this one. And I am going to do that. So, you know, these blend surfaces, even though the cone plot looks decent on them, uh, if the hulls aren't good, I am not satisfied. Because at the end of the day, it's all about hulls. So I didn't really use CV hulls too much, uh, apart from manipulating parent CVs. So let's see here. We will... You know, when I'm unsure about something, I don't... Um, generally tend to worry about it. I just start tweaking and I see if it's the right thing and this clearly is the right thing. There. It's breaking up but that's okay. Good. So don't be afraid to move this around. Don't be afraid to look at that. So this is the patch. This patch also has a blend-like characteristic. These CVs still look pretty nice. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and select all the surfaces, ISO angle, and, well, shaded surface can stay on, doesn't matter, but visual curves, I'll turn that off. Then I'm going to see how it selected all of these because that's one single surf. Uh, with these, you could also go back into the dynamic section tool and then turn them off, but I'm just going to choose to delete them there. I'm also going to turn all these hulls off. You will notice the highlight here. Mm. I'm, I'm honestly not entirely satisfied. 